<laughs> Welcome to Electron Line, and here's our next example. Uh, to draw a loose structure, we're going to use the molecule H2SO4, of course, that's known as sulfuric acid. And one of the reasons why the octet rule is violated, and it will be violated in this molecule, is because we, the molecule doesn't want the separation of formal charges. And I'll show you in just a moment what that really means. But in essence, when the charges, when a molecule becomes more polar, a molecule will try to fight that in tendency to become more polar. We'll see in a moment how the bonding then will change to accommodate that. All right, first of all, let's take a look at the molecule itself. We have two hydrogens. Uh, so we have hydrogen has one valence electron, and we have two of those. That means we have two valence electrons available for bonding. Sulfur has six valence electrons, so there's only one of those. And then we have oxygen, which also has six valence electrons. And so we multiply it times four because there's four of them, that's 24 electrons. So a total of 32 electrons are available in, for bonding in this particular molecule. All right, now next we want to look for the one that has the lowest electronegativity, which is sulfur. And so therefore we expect sulfur to be the central uh, atom in this molecule. So let's put sulfur in the middle. There's four oxygens, and we know that hydrogen becomes become appendages on the outside of the molecule, so we probably would expect something that looks like this. So we have uh, oxygens circling the sulfur, and then we have hydrogens on the side, so maybe we'll have a hydrogen here and a hydrogen there. Um, notice that these hydrogens will become uh, positively charged to some extent because the oxygen will draw in the molecules a little bit more than the hydrogen, so these positive appendages want to be far away from one another if possible. Okay, so let's draw the uh, remaining molecule, uh, remaining uh, electrons. Uh, since oxygen here has two bonds, that takes care of four electrons, so uh, there's four more required on this one and on this one. Then let's see here. Uh, this oxygen here makes a single bond. It started with six valence electrons. That means one less. That means it should have five left. One, two, three, four, five. And right away we realize, of course, that's not a likely scenario, but it's a good start for us uh, to figure out what's going on with the molecule. And so five on this one. Of course, sulfur started with six. It used four for bonding, so it should have another pair available like that. Now, since oxygen is more electronegative than the sulfur, what's probably going to happen is that these two molecules will get drawn one to each oxygen, because oxygen will have a stronger pull on those, ox on those uh, electrons, to form, a, uh, a, to form six valence electrons around each of these oxygens. Uh, but let's see in a moment what happens when we do that. So let's start, let's redraw this. So we have these oxygens, so they, they pull in the additional electron because they're more electronegative, like so. Uh, we have an oxygen going this way, but a hydrogen, this has two valence electrons. And then we come up over here, oxygen, four valence electrons, and a hydrogen like that. All right, so what happens now when we have the molecule like this? Notice that sulfur started out with six electrons available for bonding, but there's only four being used. The other two got pulled away. So in essence, sulfur, which normally would have six valence electrons, now actually has kind of a formal charge of two positive charges. Because it had six, it now only has four. Part of the time it will have eight, but on average it will only have four electrons around the sulfur. So it has a formal charge of two. And then look at these oxygens right here. Notice that they start out with six, but now they have six plus one in the bonding, so that's an extra electron than they normally wouldn't have, so these have a formal charge of minus one. So that's what we mean by formal charges. They're not real charges, but the fact that the electrons spend more time over here and less time over here would cause this to be more positive in charge and this to be more negatively charged. Uh, it's kind of like a polar molecule. And so that is not a preferred stable situation. And what can happen here is to compensate for that, the molecule can form a double bond structure. So what, what will happen now is that two of these oxygens will begin to form a double bond with sulfur, two of the oxygens will form a single bond with sulfur, which then will inherit the hydrogens on the other side. So let's then draw the, redraw the molecule again. So we have sulfur over here, we have then the two oxygens forming double bonds 
two forming single bonds. And of course, the ones that form single bonds will also have hydrogen on the other side. So these will still be in the same format as the two that we had before, like that. Now notice, since these oxygens now have double bonds, they will now only have four electrons around them. Notice, they will now, of course, follow the octet rule. We have four here and four there. That's a total of eight part of the time, total of eight part of the time here. This one has two, four, six, eight uh, uh, electrons, eight electrons. The hydrogens part time have two electrons. So everything is satisfied as far as the octet rule is concerned, except for the sulfur. The sulfur now has two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve part time electrons, which is much greater than eight. So the octet rule is not followed. There's another exception to the octet rule, but notice there's no longer a formal separation of charges here. So notice that part of the time sulfur will have one, two, three, four, five, six electrons on average. That means since it started with six electrons and on average it will have six electrons, there's no longer a separation of formal charges. Same with the oxygen. These start with six electrons and part of the time they will have on average two, four, six electrons, two, four, six electrons. And so again, there's no separation of formal charges. Um, and so therefore, that is a more stable molecule than this. So this is the one that eventually you'll see in nature when you look at sulfuric acid. That's typically what that molecule will look like, rather than this. Even though this one will satisfy the, the rules, yeah, satisfy, satisfy the octet rule, uh, but the problem is that it pulls charges away from the sulfur it causes this to be negatively charged, not to be positively charged, and this therefore is a more stable scenario. Uh, let's see if we satisfy the total number of electrons being used. So let's add them up. We have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 valence electrons, like so, plus how many caught in bonding? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, plus 16 electrons in bonds is 32 electrons. And notice that satisfies the total available electrons. So this is a perfectly good scenario, and that's what a sulfuric acid molecule looks like.